stay home alone. My aunts had taken me to various churches and even to vacation Bible schools. Still, I didn't know how to read the Bible. At Holbrook, it was embarrassing not knowing how to read the Bible at a Christian school. But slowly I started to learn about Jesus and how he works in our lives. I gave my heart to Jesus. Four years later, I graduated from Holbrook Indian School. I studied in college for two years, but then moved on to other things. My life became busy, and I lost sight of Jesus and being a Seventh-day Adventist. While visiting a friend in Texas, I heard that my aunt, who is like a mother to me, had gotten really sick and was in and out of the hospital in Phoenix, Arizona. I caught a flight from Texas back to Arizona on my birthday to surprise my aunt. I spent time with her before she passed away a few days later. After her passing, I ran away from home and back to Texas. But I wasn't happy. When a friend from Holbrook informed me about a job opening for a task force worker at the school, I jumped at the chance. When I returned, I worked closely with the students, and it brought me so much joy. The following year, the school asked me to return as this fellowship coordinator. Being back at Holbrook has changed my life in so many ways, and it feels amazing to be surrounded by love. seen the um, beautiful mission story. I hope and I pray that we're going to continue sharing our blessings because we don't know who we can bless with our uh, very simple offering to God. That's all and happy Sabbath. Okay, uh, thank you Sister Jay for that uh, mission story. We are so blessed that uh, Sister Jay blessed us with the mission story. Right now, I think Amy's mommy is a blessed woman today because hopefully a, a future son-in-law is the one who's giving us the promotional talk. Yeah. We are praying that it will be a future son-in-law. He's the one giving us the promotional talk. Brother Fam, I can see you smiling from ear to ear, you know? So I'm <laughs> very, very blessed. I'm so happy, you know, it's a family reunion right on zoom this is so so beautiful for us you know this is so beautiful for us so i'm going to ask uh brother fem to please give us the uh what you call this one the promotional talk and welcome to our father who's just joining us as well uh i worship hall it's written worship hall so welcome welcome amen Sorry, is that your father, Fem? They are saying maybe it's your father. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Amy's mommy. The father-in-law is around too. So, <laughs> this for us. I'm so blessed, you know. This is such a beautiful reunion. Uh, welcome. Sorry, what is his name? Pastor? Pastor? Okay, Ma Mapusa. Okay, Pastor Mapusa would like to welcome you. And uh, your son is the one who is about to give us the promotional talk right now. He just sang and gave us a beautiful song with Sister Amy, and Amy's mom is there as well. So may you feel welcome in our church. Amen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so today... Uh, Actually, I was I was not supposed to deliver uh, today's promotional talk, but a friend requested, so uh, I had no choice. <laughs> Anyways, we'll be talking about the life of Abraham, heroes of faith, and the five vital lessons that we can learn from his life. So here are three verses, and he received circum circumcision as a sign, as a sign, a seal of the righteousness that he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So then he is the father of all who believe that have not been circumcised in order that righteousness might be credited to them. It's found in Romans 4.11, and I won't be reading the next two verses because, yeah. Anyway. So 
But as we all know, Abraham is one of the most popular spiritual giants in the Bible. He is known as the father of the faithful and the friend of God. And his life is so significant that Abraham has been mentioned more times in the New Testament than anyone in the Old Testament. And his story, if you've been reading your Bible a lot, you would know that the most part of Genesis uh, talks about Abraham and his life. So his life is filled with so many accomplishments and failures that we should not fail to take note of. So today we will be exploring the life of Abraham and inculcate in our minds the vital lessons that we must learn. So lesson number one, be willing to give up everything for God. So Abraham is called the father of the faithful for good reasons, because when God calls him to leave his homeland, the land where he grew up, the land where he knows everyone and everyone knows his name, he immediately went out, not knowing where he was going. You can find one in Hebrews 11 verse eight. And then the test of faith, it did not stop there, you know? God asked him to offer his only begotten son. Now, can you imagine the torment, right? Can you imagine the doubt, the fear that Abraham felt? So if you're the father, if you're a father, do you have the strength or courage to put your beloved son, beloved son on an altar and kill him? burn him and offer him up to God. So it it requires faith to be able to do that man. So Abraham is also human. However, faith is bigger than his doubts because he strongly believed that God is able to raise Isaac up even from the dead. So Abraham made a decision to give not only just 50%, 70%, or even 80% of his life, but he decided to give 100% of his life to God. Abraham is ready to leave behind everything familiar to him, even his own son, he is willing to offer to God. So God will never, never leave us empty. So in Psalm 84 verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who, whose walk is blameless. So this is God's promise for all of us that if we are just faithful and willing enough, God will not withhold all the good things that he can offer up to us. Yeah. So lesson number two. Even spiritual giants are still humans. So there is no doubt that Abraham's faith is among the strongest among the Bible characters, right? So, however, even if even if his faith is still strong, he is still human. Because when Abraham and Sarah were old enough, they still did not have a son. And it was, this was a big issue in their life because since Abraham was, you know, he, he was rich, there was, there would be, there, he has no heir, right? No one would inherit his property. But yeah, it was uh, more like an uh, embarrassing time because, yes, Abraham was so rich, but then if he dies, no one would inherit all of his properties, right? No one would inherit uh, all the things he acquired. And so... Abraham and Sarah grew impatient. Sarah gave her handmaid, Hagar, to Abraham. And then we know the story. Hagar had a son in Ishmael. This caused division in their household. Even though Abraham was faithful, he still made mistakes. And then even after the death of Sarah, Abraham took con concubines. Then if you break the law of God, it will breakthrough. So Abraham soon suffered the consequences of his sinful actions. So although we can see that Abraham is not perfect, he is still considered a friend of God. So we can find comfort from his life that even though we may commit mistakes and sin every day, God is always faithful to forgive us as long as we repent and change our ways. Lesson number three, Tithing leads to physical blessings. 
So God commanded his people to give tithe, tithes and offerings because of Abraham's obedience in the law of tithing and to the law of God as a whole, he was blessed and increased by God. So needless to say, we all we always find this in Malachi 3 verse 10 verses 10 to 12 that tithing opens the floodgates of heaven. I will not be reading the whole verse because we always hear this one every time it's uh offered offertory, right? Yeah, tithe and offerings. So let's go to lesson number four. Faith is both believing and doing. So faith is demonstrated through action. Believing is one thing, I'm sorry for the typo, one thing, but acting on that belief is also completely different. Okay? So Abraham showed us that no one can earn salvation, and it is equally true that salvation cannot be earned by oh, earned without works. If faith is demonstrated through action, yeah, this is what I... So, Abraham exemplified what true and living faith is. Abraham has faith. And how would God know if he really has faith? Through his actions. So, again, faith is both belief in God and doing his commandment. And the last one, lesson number five, when making a decision, think generationally. So, Abraham is a man of, man of decision. Right? Whether we like it or not, we, all are, we are all presented with choices. Every day, some minor decisions like what I need to buy today, what will I eat today, and there are some major decisions like uh, am I going to, uh, you know, other major decisions, whatever it is. So the story of Abraham showed us that every action leads to another. Okay, Abraham made a decision that did not just affect his life, but also the life of other people. And the effects of this decision did not just affect his immediate lifetime, but also down through the history of man. So this decision of Abram to take into his own hands the fulfillment of God's promise caused a tremendously negative effect. Now, you can see that that was one of his mistakes. He grew impatient. He, they, Sarah and Abram, grew impatient. They, they took matters into their own hands. So you can see that how it affected not just their family, but also, you know, their their sons and yeah, the generations to come. <laughs> their offspring, yes. <laughs> so again, here are the five lessons that we can learn from Abraham. First, be willing to give everything for God. Second, even spiritual giants are still humans, so we must not despair. Even, oh, I, I have made a sin today. I cannot be faithful like Abraham. Yes, you may commit sin because we're sinners, but all we need to do is just repent, and then God is willing to forgive us. Third, tithing leads to physical blessings. Fourth, faith is both believing and doing. And the last one, when making a decision, we must think generationally we must not only make a decision to affect our present time but also we need to think about the future as well so abram is known to be the father of the faithful whether we are jew or gentile israelite or non-israelite or whatever our race or cultures are we are still part of abram's seed when we accept jesus sacrifice and follow god's commands Therefore, it is important for us to think about the life of Abraham. Learn the lessons from his life and like faith, let these lessons be evident in our lives through righteous deeds and actions. So, that is for our promotional talk today. I hope I promoted a life of faith. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I don't know, we just connected our device. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay, amen. I can see part of the triplets. Happy Sabbath, you and your family. And uh, actually, when we were doing everything, I was reminded of the scripture. It's found in Psalms 127, verse 3. It says, children are 
inheritance from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. So I am sure that uh, Amy's mommy, you know, we are so happy you are here with us. And you can see, I mean, I think it's the most beautiful thing to see your child serving the Lord, you know, not going astray because right now there are so many things, you know, like drugs and uh, alcohol. But seeing your child sing to the Lord is just a beautiful thing. And also, Pastor Mabuso, you can see, uh, okay, you can see your son, Brother Fam, is also, you know, in the Lord. We are so, so blessed that uh, he's worshiping. And I'm sure wherever you are, both of you kneel down and pray for your children. And seeing them doing this is such a blessing. I know we have got mother, Sister Jay, uh, mother of the triplets, mother of the twins, you know, they already. This is uh, where we are going to as mothers, you know, because uh, the children should serve the Lord. Amen. Right now, I would like to give this uh, just three minutes to anyone who wants to give testimonies of uh, what God has done for them, what God has done for them throughout the week. Anybody who wants to share their testimony? I was very happy. I thought Sister Sheila May is coming, mother of the twins. I thought she wanted to give a testimony. Anybody, Sister Jay? Sister Yasa? I have something. Okay, thank you, Sister Bambi. Uh, I am actually very thankful because I got my Kurusapa and yay! And yeah, so I said, I don't want to worry with the visa and, you know, because my visa will end in August 8th and there was this, you know, time, time, you have to have these days to like process the visa. So I said, I don't want to stress out, but the teacher who is processing the visa just got, I just have her baby and she was in CS. So she was at home. So I was like worrying and I was like going here and there. So I told my boss, the teacher, and she happens to be like the one who signs the, you know, the salary. And, you know, I like opened up to her and she like tried to, okay, teacher, I would like, she was like doing something on her phone. And, you know, I am like very happy because after that, she gave me the, the teacher's number and I was telling her, I've been calling her, but she's not answering. And... I think she is like very powerful because after that, the teacher actually called me, the one who is processing the visa. And yeah, she was nice and I was very happy and very thankful for my teacher, Nong Lak, actually. So thank you, Jesus, for the blessing. And let's continue Amen. praying. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Sister Bambi, for that. Uh, welcome, Sister Dimpo, and others who just joined us. Uh, anybody, we are at the point where we are give, giving testimonies. You know, some people were talking about some people being sick last time. I remember, were there any healings that took place? I'm not sure that we can thank God for. Ma'am. How is mother now? Sister Jay, you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to share that we're so blessed and happy that our parents were vaccinated yesterday. Uh, after, since last year, we've been trying to convince them because they really don't want. But then my brothers and sisters are already finished in the Philippines and only them, they're so hesitant to get uh, the vaccine. But then with God's help, really pray that they're going to uh, get that one because they always go out from the house. So we're so worried whatever uh, will happen to them. And then at last yesterday, they sent us the picture. That's why we're so happy and we're just so thankful to God. <laughs> That's all. Amen, amen. We are thankful that they got vaccinated. I'm yet to convince my Amen, people. amen. Yes, I'm yet to convince my own parents to do the same. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, uh, Sister Jay, that you were able, your family was able to convince them. I can see Father of the Triplets has put his hand up. I was clapping, ma'am. 
<laughs> he was clapping. Okay, we all thank God for the gift of life. The Lord is so merciful. You know, like uh, when we switch on our group messages from our different countries, I think you can see that so many people are affected by COVID, and we get daily reports of people just dying, but the Lord is so merciful to us. He has kept us alive. It is mercy and grace. We are not here because we are clever. We are here because God is merciful to us. And we're in this country. For those in Thailand, we are lucky. Some have already been vaccinated. Others are yet deciding. Someone behind me is yet deciding whether to be vaccinated or not. But actually, we thank God for these opportunities that we have to be vaccinated. And we thank God for the simple gift of life. May we always be. I shared something in the morning uh, with my group. Let me share it with you right now. I shared something. I'm going to read it to you. Because in the midst of it all, we might forget just how blessed we are. And it's coming from Ellen White. I will read it for you. It says, uh, trust God. It comes from SC 122.1. Trust God. We should not allow the perplexes perplexities and worries of everyday life to fret the mind and cloud the brow. We should not be stressed. You know, we should, you know, there are people who are so always stressed because of the challenges that they are facing. But then it's a reminder to us that we should not allow that in our lives, right? And if we do, we shall always have something to vex and annoy us. We should not indulge a solid attitude that only fret and waste us but does not help us to bear trials. So let's always be thankful for the gift of life and thankful for all that God has done for us. I, I hope and trust we were all blessed by uh, our service. I can see pastor, our pastor, and the son is smiling from ear to ear, uh, seeing his father online. <laughs> this is so amazing, you know. Pastor Mabuso, you know, your son is really, really, really happy to see you online. And I will hand over to... Uh, to Sabambi, but before we do that, we are going to ask Father of the Triplets to please pray for us. Father of the Triplets, please pray for us. I think he did not hear me. Father of the Triplets, Brother Ian, please pray for us. Please pray for us. Please pray for us. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Father, let us pray. Our most gracious and kind, loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful day that you've given us. May we be guided by your uh, wisdom. And as we are going to study our lesson, may you help us understand it and we will embody it as we continue into this journey of life. Uh, thank you so much for everything. And forgive us uh, for all the things that we have committed against these things I ask in the lovely name of say pray. Amen. 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 This is such a beautiful, a beautiful Sabbath. We're handing over to Sister Bambi. I cannot wait for her to leave the lesson. I am that excited. I hope she will switch on her camera so that we can see her face. May God bless us all as we worship. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. So let me open my PowerPoint. So before, while it is opening, I want to ask you, who loves David? Who loves the story of David? Me, me. Okay, I think everybody loves the story of David. So the Sabbath, <coughs> okay, so happy Sabbath once again. So does anyone remember the title of our lesson for this week? I can I can read your lips. You can just say it. Nobody remembers. How about the 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 memory text for this week. Can anybody remember without looking from their Psalms 5110? Psalms 5110. Okay. 
Remember, I gave it to you. Psalm 51 10. My favorite verse. Creating yeah, so I think heart. it's everybody's. Yes, yes. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Okay, so I will share my PowerPoint. And I will open my camera. <laughs> Green chair. Chair. Can you see it? Can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay, so it's lesson four. The title is The Cost of Sin. Let me get my copy. And our memory text, let's read it all together. In Psalms 51.10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So this is, this is the... It covers the life story of King David. So to make a preview, not a preview, a review from the lesson. So uh, in, in, in Saturday, it says here that, you know, many people, many people are very desperate to like find a little peace and quietness because as you can see that our world now is so noisy. I can hear myself from the speaker of memory. Yeah, and you know, people are even very willing to like pay, spend money just to be able to uh, sit, quietly and you know think and take a nap but this sabbath we will really know the true cost the the cost of true rest in the life of the 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 man after god's own heart and that is king david so this morning as what we always do we have questions but this time is i did not put the answer so that we will not be arguing about the correct answer. But I want you to answer it really from what you understood from the lesson because I know everybody read their lesson. Okay? Okay, so let's go to uh, the first question. So this was taken from Sunday. And the question is, why was David worn and weary? So to, so is anybody want to give a short summary of what happened here? Or do you want me to give it? Let me give it then. So here, what happened here is like David was uh, in the rooftop of the palace and then uh, she saw this woman, but she was, so this is how the story goes here. And, you know, she was very beautiful, taking a bath. And so she called for her, you know, she asked information about her and she called for her and then, bam, uh, David sinned. So here, why was David worn and weary? So I believe that the, the pastor's son and the pastors are here. So they can like help us, you know, know more about what happened here and why was David worn in weary. Let me. Is my memory answering now? Okay, ma'ams. I want to try. Okay, I think that um, David was worn and weary because of the sin that he had committed. You know, he, there he was, he had committed a sin. And then after that, he's trying to hide it and hide it and, and hide it. And because he was trying to hide it so much, he was weary. You know, when you are plotting, you know, he has to plot, Uriah. He has to plot. He's plotting in his mind. He's tired. And all his plans are not coming to pass, you know. They are failing. So he's weary and tired because of that. Amen. 
Thank you, sister. Memory for that message. So as you have heard, you know, when you do something bad, it won't let, you won't have the peace of mind. So same with, with David. He, he was, he was uh, a man after God's own heart. But, you know, he stayed and now he cannot sleep in the night because of what he did. So he was really worn and weary. So sin, sin is, uh, it has a twin. Sin has a twin. And that is, what is the twin of the sin? The consequences. So something like that. So I think Brother Jeff wants to answer because I can see him. He cannot settle on his seat. Brother Jeff, the floor is yours. Yeah, it's quite uncomfortable when your office is your home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, uh, I heard uh, the answer and I agree that if you are... You're committing sin and you're aware of it, especially it's adultery. God will rebuke you. And of course, the consequences of that is not having peace. Okay, so is anybody wants to add up? Why was David born and weary? What are, you know, the other things that might have uh made him you know uncomfortable with what he did so let's call people out uh, who are here let's hear from the pastor the elder would like to answer yeah, can I try? Okay, uh, why was David born and weary? Uh, just what Memo said, it's, uh, I agree with Memo. Uh, he knows that he committed sin. And not only that, he knows that he committed sin against God. We can uh, commit sin also against people. And then mm -hmm. uh, we, we hate people. It's a sin already. But what he did, he committed adultery, murder, and cheated someone. So it's uh, those things that they had, he had committed, it's, a, it's written in the book of the, uh, the Ten Commandments. So he knows that he had committed a big sin. And what he did, as Memo said, he hid and hid and hid. Instead of confessing the sin, and God, he knows already that God can renew him. At the time, he did not, uh, he did not uh, confess. Yes, he was hiding the sin. He hid it and, until he was weary. Uh, not up, up to the story, the next uh, story that he uh, he confessed already. But at that moment, he knew already that he had committed a big sin against God, not only from people, but to God already. Yeah, amen. So uh, here in the lesson, it says here that uh, David actually had absolute power, but because he was the king. And he was like anointed by God. But here it also says that uh, he is not above of the law, something like that. So he has the power, but that power doesn't make him like above. Anybody wants to share their thoughts? How about Sister Kim? Do you want to share anything? Um, my mom said like, uh, David was worn and weary because uh, after his sin, he has like plans, right? Like backup plans to cover up for his sins and none of it is working. So he has to come up with another plan after another. And then, uh, like nothing is working for him and he doesn't want to like uh confess it like he's trying to hide it and that's why he is so worn and weary of like you know planning how to hide his sins yeah. amen anybody would want to add up 
Uh, or we should go to the next question. Okay. Uh, something to add. Uh, I also agree with uh, Sir Wawa's mother okay, and brother all of your address, but I would also like to add something wherein he was not just worn and weary because of the sin that he committed and uh, trying to think of backup plans on top of backup plans, but he was also uh, one of the ways, uh, one of the things that contributed to his being worn and weary was <clears throat> the fact that they are in a war, right? And as king, he was supposed to be there for his men to, uh, I don't know, give moral support, strategies, and whatever. But he was in his castle, so it gave him like the anxiety of uh, what's happening out there to the battlefield, what is... How are my men doing? Are they eating right? Are they do they are they equipped enough? S something like that. So, you know, all of these things, physical, mental, and yeah, contributed to being worn and weary. Amen. Thank you, brother Fan. So here it says here that uh, David's fall was a consequence of a chain of mistake. So as what brother Fan is saying. He is, there was a war at the time, but you know, he, he, the first thing it, it was written here is he did not fulfill his duty as the king. He's supposed to be there to lead his men in the battle, but you know, he was there in the palace. And the second is he did not turn away, but took pleasure in temptation. So he was in the roof and he could like, oh, someone is taking a bath. I should not look, but you know, he fall into temptation. He did not even close his eyes, something like that. And you know, he found a way to fulfill his desire. So what did he do? He called for the woman and then he committed the sin. Say it brother and sister, what's the sin? Say it. Okay, never mind. And then he tried to conceal his sin by fooling a good man. And then after that, he put Uriah, 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 Uriah in a dangerous position by getting him drunk. So look at what he did. Very smart. So he, and then after that, he arranged for his murder because everything did not fall into what he wanted to happen. Yeah, and he tried to conceal his sin by marrying Bathsheba. So that's, so that's what happened. So let's move on to question number two. <clears throat> so this is on Monday. So if you have your le lesson with you, you can have a pick so that you will somehow, yeah. So the question is, why Nathan, why Nathan the prophet rebuked David of his sin? Why did David David react humbly. So I know that you are well aware of what happened to the story. So after David's sin, God was displeased. And so he sent the prophet Nathan. And here the question is, why Nathan, the prophet, rebuked David of his sin? Why did David react humbly? So anybody who would like to open their mic? Let me see who are here and I can call their names. What is the sister Ayesa? Hello there. So why do you think sister? She will say first, maybe later. Enough to... Uh maybe has she realized that he has been? Uh sister Kim answering sister Bundy. But actually, I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are correct, this for Kim. How about Brother Raul? Why do you think? So if you put yourself into David, King David's shoes, you did something wrong and you are caught in the act, will you like uh, admit that, oh, I've seen, or you will be like, huh? Of course. But here, King David reacts humbly. So let's, you know, dig deeper. That's what they always okay. say in 
you know, things like that. Dig deeper into the from the word of God. So how about the the mom of sister? Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Hello, Bambi. Can... Amy, Amy. She's done. Okay, brother Ralph, on sa. Oh. Uh, if I were in David's situation, of course, I will do the same. You know? It's better to, because we cannot hide from God. So it's better to to admit our mistakes you know? than just to keep it by ourselves. It will add to more sin and it we will not be released unless we will ask forgiveness and surrender our sin to God. So... Good thing, no? David asked forgiveness and he admitted his sin because if he will not admit, he will become like Saul. Yeah. That's it. Anybody who would want to add up to that? Hey, uh, Thank you, Brother about, Ralph. About Ralph's uh, statement, it's true. Uh, when David realizes that Nathan, the prophet sent by God, rebuked him about his sin, he knew that, oh, I, I sin against God. And if you sin against God, David is a very smart king. He is gifted with his uh, brain. He's so smart enough to realize that without God, he is nothing. He knows that what happened to uh Adam and Eve with the committed sin. He knows that if God punished them, God can God can forgive our sin. But if we will not uh, confess our sin and we we are we we are able to how do you say this one? Uh, can you say that one? You, the the thing that you that you really regret being a sinner. God 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 will punish you. There's a consequences of committing sin. David knew that if he will not confess his sin, God will get the Holy Spirit. So he said, God, forgive me for what I have done. Uh, do not let the Holy Spirit uh, get my Holy Spirit because he knows that he is in the war. If God uh, took the Holy Spirit, David cannot, uh, nothing can do about it. But uh, he knows that he will be defeated. That's why he humbled himself and asked God to renew his Holy Spirit. And he knows that God can forgive his sin. But there's always a consequences of committing sin. That's why he know at the end that there will something will happen. But he said, God forgive me, renew my Holy Spirit. But David, uh, but Nathan revealed to him that you know there's a consequence. God can cleanse you. God can make you new. God can uh, give you a very a new Holy Spirit. But there's always a consequences of what we have done of the sin that we have committed. That's why we knew in the story that he lost his four sons, the son that he had with uh, Bathsheba and three of his sons. And that's why he knew what happened about what happened to David, what happened to King Saul. He knew. He's very smart. If we, as in our generation, we committed sin, that's why we have to humble ourselves ask for the forgiveness of God, ask God to renew us, renew the Holy Spirit in us so that we will live. Uh, because if we if we ask God for forgiveness, we know already in our previous lesson, when, when you ask for forgiveness, God will see Jesus in us. The Holy Spirit will be the one to face Jesus. We don't look at us as David. We don't look at us as uh, Brother Oro. We don't look at us what we are. God will look at us as Jesus because of the Holy Spirit. That's why we humble ourselves as for the Holy Spirit. That is my answer. Amen. Can I, can I try? So thank you, Brother Otto, for that. Thank, okay, Kuya. Okay. Uh, the, way, the, way, the way I see it is like, why did David react humbly? Because he, he, the, Nathan presented him in a graceful manner. Um, Nathan did not go there mm -hmm. to confront to confront David. Ah, because of your sin, he, he did not come there to nag to nag David of his sin. But instead, he showed a parable that David himself will realize what he has done to 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 God and to 
uh, Uriah and also to Bathsheba. Uh, imagine yourself, if somebody will come to you, you're the king of the nation, and somebody will confront you and say, ah, you're a, you're a rude king or you're a bad king because you slept with another, another man's wife or you slept with your neighbor's uh, wife or you, you, you slept or you do um, things that is not pleasant to God. What do you think will you react? I think you will get your sword and cut the, the head of Nathan right away, right? But instead, um, Nathan showed and, and told, her that, told him the story of a poor man, that there was a, that there was a rich man who, who wants to celebrate something because he has visitor, but then he wants to uh, kill, kill the, the ship of his neighbor which has, the poor neighbor has only one ship. And the, the story tells us that even, even that poor man would sleep together with, with his own animal because he has nothing, with, nothing more. But the king is so rude. He has everything, yet he, he planned to get his neighbor's uh, animal to be cooked in the celebration. But then, uh, when he was so angry, he said, uh, what will we do with that man? And he himself, David, uh, pronounced that he will, he, will, he will kill that man. But then when Nathan confronted him, told him that it's you, my king, then he, he, he calmed down. He, he humbly accepted um, what uh, Prophet Nathan told him. So for us, it's, it's a reflection. If somebody as a king for himself would tell us, right there in front of you of what you're seeing. Do you think you will not react right away? But then uh, Nathan used use a different kind of approach to David. That's why he himself humbled because he himself realizes that he had done something wrong. So I think in our situation, I will apply it, I, I will apply it in, our, in our situation. If there are situations where friends or maybe we know somebody who have uh, done something wrong i think it is it is not right to confront the person right there of what he has done i think we we have to approach in a graceful manner so that that person will not be hurt as well and that let the person realize that he had something wrong and that's what david did he humbled himself because he himself realizes that he had done a great sin against god so he, he, David reacts humbly because of the approach of what uh, Prophet Nathan mm -hmm. told him. Amen. So thank you, Amen. Brother Jeff. Amen. Jeff Boy. So uh, I am realizing something here. So it is actually very okay to rebuke someone, but it depends on the approach that you will do. So if someone offended you, I mean, like, them is laughing if someone offended you if someone did something that you can see go and approach them tell them what they did and you know if you are the the offender if you are the one who did something wrong don't be like don't be offended because you know you want to uh you don't want to be like you yeah, so are you getting my point? So go and approach your brother and sisters. And, but, you know, uh, do it with love. Do it in, you know, pray for it first. And, yeah, so let's. Uh, can, I, can I just add a little bit? Because uh, it's true, very true what Brother Jeffrey said. Because of the approach, the approach of Nathan is very smart. Very smart. It's really true what Jeff was said. And and David was in class. He knows that, oh, this person is me. When uh, when Buddy Jeff explained that Nathan gave an example of a very wealthy person, a very rich person. And he didn't realize that it was him who would do that thing. And what his punishment is that kill this person uh, with the sword like this, like this. And then when you realize that Nathan said, This is you who do who do who did it, you realize that, oh, really? So this is pain, feeling what God felt of what uh, of what uh, King David done. 
So he realized that, oh, God also was very upset, very, very angry when he did it to, when this person, when, I, when King David did it to Uriah. So <laughs> very, very true. The answer, by the way, for each. Very correct. Amen. So uh, I am with memory every time she would like tell someone, hey, sister, hey, sister. Because, you know, I think it's it's good as well for the church, but we have to remember that uh, the there is the best approach and it was given to us from the Bible. So let's move on to the third question. So let's go to Tuesday lesson. So the question here, why was David's sin forgiven outright but not forgotten? Oh, no, it's forgiven but not forgotten. So why do you think? So anybody who would want to answer this question? So why do you think David's sin was forgiven outright but not forgotten? Uh, so let's ask the pastor. Pastor Magpusaw. Still preparing, doing final touches. Oh, then the son of the pastor. Okay. Uh, it's a. How do you, okay. Can you give me a minute? <laughs> to can I share? Okay, brother Ralph. Okay, I, I guess. Uh, that's the consequence, no? Yeah, David's sin was an example, no? Not for the main, for all the generations, especially uh, uh, up to now, no? To remind us that how how terrible is sin is, no? If we commit sin, we are ruining, no? Not just ourselves, but also the name of the Lord, because uh, David is serving serving God, and then. Imagine the people have learned his sin and people were angry and all that. And God doesn't want that to happen. And it was a set an example so that we will not repeat the same mistake what, of what they would have done. Amen. Amen, Brother Ralph. Go back to Brother Fem. Okay, so why was David sin forgotten? Forgot, forgiven outright, but not forgotten. I agree with Ralph's answer there. It's for us, uh, it's uh, so that it will be a lesson for us. And David's sin was forgot, uh, forgiven immediately because when he recognized that he sinned, he confessed. His sin, right? We can find that in First John one nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So, since David was humble enough to confess his sins, and uh, also humble enough to ask help, then the Lord delivered His promise. But then, even though David was forgiven, God did not forget that he sinned. He still suffered the consequences of that sin. So. Amen, amen. Okay, so uh, as in in the lesson, you know that sin that David committed, it it hurt God. So if you go back to Monday from the lower part, so I'm reading from there. So it hurt God. You know, it hurt David himself. It affects you know others. You know, it brings disgrace to his family. I mean, even in our family, if one of us stand here today, or maybe the other day, I mean, I, so it, uh, it disgraced our family and the church. And yeah, so it's, sin can be forgiven, but it is not forgotten because of what happened. So in the case of David, you know, he, we... He saw his his son from Bathsheba died because of that sin, and and after that four of his son died because of that sin. And you know who can who can forget 
what David did because you know he lost his own blood i mean his own son because of that skin right brother Ian? thank you anybody who would want to add up to this can part can i add a little bit okay pastor uh, you've been calling me. Um, David's sin yes. was forgiven. Sure. That uh, is giving us the practical lesson that God is a forgiving God. But on the other hand, we have this statement here, but not forgotten. Maybe in the sight of God, the enormity of sin is covered by his righteousness. But then the question is so intriguing that the sin that David had committed is still remembered up to our time. That is why it's not forgotten. Everybody who is a Bible-believing person always remembers the sin of David that could not be forgotten because it is part of the history where God forgives the sin of the people. Uh, most likely our hero today is David. And he gives us that lesson in life that sin really hurts. Sin makes us weary. It warns us. And forgiveness of that sin is only done through the grace of God. We are assured with his forgiveness, but still the, the effects of that sin echoed even in the next generation. So up to this time, if ever we have time to talk to David later on or someday, uh, we can still look at him and talk about how his experience was, his joy, his peace, after he realizes that God has forgiven him and allow him again to enter into the presence of God as his servant. No? Uh, practical uh, lessons is that our sins can be forgiven, but still we have to face its consequences, whether it will be the people who will learn what kind of person we are in the sight in their sight uh, human as we are sinner as we are still they, we will be tagged as a sinner in the sight but despite of the forgiveness we are having because our sins are not forgotten uh, in the human in the human eye our little mistake covers all our good and that's why we are always remembered to be doing things unpleasant before God. Thank you. Amen. So thank you for that, Pastor. So anybody who would want to add up to what the Pastor said, if everybody agrees, then let's continue to the next question. So we have two more to hear. Uh, from David's prayer of repentance that is found in Psalms 51, what is his ultimate plea to God? So, do you remember the prayer of David? This is Wednesday. So let's go to Wednesday. So, anybody who would want to share, what is David's ultimate plea to God? So, as we all know that uh, Psalms 51 was written because of what? Uh, it's out of what uh, he did, you know, that scene that he did with Bathsheba and that whole thing. So uh, he wrote this song in Psalms 51. It, it was actually a very wonderful song. So if anyone who has this verse, or maybe we can ask someone to read it to us so that we can really uh, internalize the message from Psalms 51. So let's ask Sister Joya to read to us Psalms 51. 
So it starts from create in me a clean heart, O God. So something like that while she's opening. Does anyone, you know, memorize this first? We memorize the other version, but I would like to give you another version of Psalms 5110. It says here, restore to me the joy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen. So that's part of the verse. And, you know, as you read, continue to the whole verse, it was actually a wonderful uh, verse from the Bible. So what is David's ultimate plea from that verse itself? So let's ask. Dun, 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 dun. So let's ask Sister Janice. I haven't heard Sister Janice. So Sister, what do you think is David's, King David's ultimate plea when he wrote this? Psalms from the Bible. So while waiting for Sister Janet, I can see Brother Jeff is thinking. Uh, it reads there that David, uh, King David was praising God for his uh, love, unfathomable love, and God uh, out of that love, God forgives, as Pastor said. And I have a question, though. Concerning both parties, uh, concerning God is love, and out of that love, God is just. So in the party of Uriah, would they consider God as just? Who can answer Jeff's question, brothers and sisters? We have to help our brother out. So that we all understand. Is okay, there any question, Jeff? Brother's Jeff's question. Okay, go yeah. So repeat repeat now the question, Jeff. In, in Uriah's side, would they consider God as just, uh, considering that they're, uh, say, son or nephew or relative? innocent man, good man, was killed in an unfairly manner. His wife was taken from him and all that. Yeah, the one who sinned, remember, it was not, uh, it was not, we cannot say it was God, it was actually David who actually killed Uriah, who organized that Uriah should be killed. And then so God actually forgave uh, David for what he did, but there was um, what you call it, a consequence, because he suffered later on because of his sin. Remember, the child that was born of this uh, uh, partnership with him and Bathsheba actually died. So that is actually God's judgment, really, on um, uh. what you call it, on David. So we cannot say God, uh, God, say or what. God is just because he did suffer at the end of the day for what he did. Was it fair what happened to Uriah? Uriah was also God's child. Let's not forget, Uriah was also God's child, and God loved him, but he was taken away from the world. It's the same with Adam, what with Cain and Abel. Even though Abel was killed by Cain, and Cain said, oh, people will kill me. God said, I will put a mark on you such that you will not be killed. It didn't mean he didn't love Abel. He forgave him, but there was still a consequence for him to suffer. Amen. I think Ralph has got something to say. Okay, I'd like to share now about that one. Actually, the death of Uriah was beautiful. No? Because he died faithfully. No? Just like some Paul, Jesus. Jesus ha don't have sin, but he died beautiful. No? He, he's, he was a good example of uh, faith. No? So, actually, it's not... It's not it's actually a beautiful death. You know? To die in Christ, to die faithful in Jesus Christ, it's, it's, it's better to die. You know? To die being faithful than to die sinning. So that's all I could share. 
So how about Kuya Jeffoy, the pastor, what can you... I would like to follow up the, uh, the question of Jeff. Uh, I like his question, but I want to follow up his question as well. Uh, it seems here that Uriah was a victim, right? So was it, uh, yeah, I will support Jeff's question. Was it just for a righteous man to die? He was innocent of, of the plot against him. He has done nothing wrong. He was a, a faithful army for the Israelites to his master, Joab, for that matter. Here, because of what uh, David was thinking to get his wife, he wants that man to die. Uh, we see the, the chain of, uh, of concealing sin against sin to David. Yes, but was it just in the sight for, for us who are learning from this experience? What is, was it just for us, for, for, for Uriah to experience that kind of thing? Oh, I guess. Hey, Brother Ralph, carry on. Oh, Is that okay. I, I guess I, I guess it's better that way, no? I'm not saying that I'm happy that Uriah died, but in spite of what happened, you no, know, it gives, it gives uh, Uriah peace. You know, what ha what will happen if in case Uriah survive and then he Bathsheba got pregnant, it will create another trauma, something like that. That's what running in my mind. So it's. It's like, for me, God has planned, no? Just like, for example, the sin of David. Uh, it will not be forgotten, but it was set an example, a lesson. You know, just also like Uriah, no? Uh, his death was an example of faith. So, that's it. Okay, so let's, let's ask the pastor, what do you think about this? Is it just for our brother Uriah. Um, Uriah's death is a sample of injustices in this world. We cannot deny the fact that there are just, just righteous people who are dying in, just, in, in an injustice manner. So Uriah here is a victim and we only hope that Uriah will be justified by the Lord and he will be included in heaven. But still, his death is not a death that is planned for the good of, of the people. He is really the victim here. Is a typical example as what our brother had, had told us. It is a typical example that when there is sin, there is a victim and there is injustice uh, way of, shall we say, in the forgiveness of sin, there is unfair and injustice way of doing it. For example, uh, God who knows no sin had died for sinners. That is the typical example for the result of sin. And every time a person commits sin, there is a victim. If he is a Christian and he asks forgiveness, then God becomes a victim for his steed because Jesus had died for the sinners unjustly. The treatment of this world towards shall we say, righteous people, good people, remains to be unjust. So we, can, we cannot deny the fact that injustices is rampant, prevalent in our days, even in the world. In our very own days, still there are injustices. And so the death of Uriah is not working together for good for me. Uh, it's not all things work together for good. It's because every sin has its own consequence. And uh, the God of heaven is giving justice to every act we are doing. Only he has that grace to forgive our sins. And so, uh, shall we say, for Uriah, he is 
the the sacrificial uh, fellow in this event because the, the the his death turns to be intentional shall we say it's a murder it's a premeditated act of david of sending uriah back to the fiercest battle at that day where the intention is to kill him a good man good in his reputation a brave soldier yet he turns to be a victim because there is sin behind that action and so shall we say there is justice god will only reveal these things in his own time and maybe our questions why why there is good why good people die unjustly and many of them even in the seventh adventist church there are people who died not because uh, of <clears throat> as a consequence of what they have done of the wrong doings but because they are good people who turns to be a victim let us accept that fact that in doing in making or in 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 that in the madness of sin there is always a victim thank you Amen. So thank you, Pastor. So is Jeff and Kuya Jeff who is satisfied with the answer? Amen. Satisfied. So, satisfied. And but I want to have a follow-up question. Okay. If if uh, somehow, and I believe, because both of them, uh, David asked for forgiveness, and uh Uriah was a victim here. If the two of them will meet in heaven. Would it be just for us humans to understand the situation whereby the one who plot for the, the killing of Uriah was there and they will be together in heaven? What do you think would, would that be? Uh, as the redeemed face their Savior, all of those errors, shall we say, sin that hurts us, will be covered by the righteousness of God and His grace. We will no longer be looking at ourselves as sinners, but we will be looking at Jesus as our Savior and His goodness towards us. Because the victorious Christian life is not about us. It is all about Jesus. It is Everything is in Him. And if we, are, we accept that we are sinners, in the sight of God, and we meet Jesus in his presence, in his loving presence, in his love that we experience in our daily lives. We, nothing will hinder us to accept everyone, even the most, uh, shall we say, fiercest, uh, shall we say, the, 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 the greatest criminal, the person who had done much wrong in us, we can still forgive him because like Jesus, we can still pray, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And Stephen also, the martyr, had also uh, uttered those voice, forgive them for they don't know what they do. That is the, per the spirit, I believe, of a redeemed person in the presence of his righteous God being a sinner we have nothing to boast and we have nothing to complain. We only submit ourselves to the mercies of God. And everyone, as we look around, we can see them also as a victim of sin, needing their Savior. And all of us will be covered by God's righteousness. We will no longer see a person in his being sinner, but we will be looking God within us who is a righteous savior thank you amen so i believe that our time is finished so before i end we have another question but maybe we can raise it in the ay because it was a wonderful question so here it says here the victorious christian life is not all about us so it's not all about us brothers and sisters it's all about jesus so we have to yearn for his presence we have to pray for his spirit 
and we have to ask his joy of salvation. So I hope that you are blessed with the wonderful lesson study this morning. And thank you everyone for participating. Amen. Amen. Over to Sister Memory. So much. Thank you so much for that uh, lesson study that we had. Because of time, we are just going to have our closing prayer by Brother Jeff. Brother Jeff, please give us the closing prayer. Let us pray. Our Almighty Father in Heaven, who are who is uh, loving, uh, just, and forgiving, Father, would like to praise you, uh, bring back the glory and honor unto you. Thank you so much for reminding us that all about this is not about us. Uh, and Lord, we hope that you would uh, come soon, prepare us, Father. And may you forgive us from our sins as you have forgiven David. Thank you so much for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. I will hand over to, thank you everybody for joining our Sabbath school. And I'll hand over to our elders, Elder Oro. Okay, maybe we will have uh, three minutes to go to the toilet and then we will proceed with uh, Sister Amy, Amy later. Uh, I just want to remind the participants of this for the divine service. We have uh, Sister Amy, already there, uh, Brother Fem, uh, Brother Jeff was already, and Sister Honey, and the Elardos family. Yeah, they're already there. And also Pastor Amukusa. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, five minutes break, and then we will... A three minutes break, and then we will, uh, Sister Amy will proceed later. And for our song service, uh, before we start our song service, let's pray with Brother Fem. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very much thankful for this wonderful time that you have given us, when we could worship you uh, freely in spirit and in truth. You bless our hearts, dear Father, that we may be ready to receive your word today. Christ and pray, amen. For our first song, let's sing, Will There Be Any Stars in My Crown? Thank you. 
to start to our start, worship, start, 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 start. let's sing near to the heart of God. Opening song, let's sing Come Christians Join to Sing.
I start this spray. <laughs> Loving God, we come to you this moment for the day you have given us to worship you. We thank you for this worship we will be doing through online. We praise your name, dear Father. Above all, we long for your presence to be with us. Guide us and make us worthy of your goodness for this day. And may the things we'll be doing will give glory and honor to your holy name. Assure us of the forgiveness of our trespasses and shortcomings that our worship will turn out to be pleasant to your eyes and we can receive your blessings for this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning, everybody, and happy Sabbath. I welcome all of our brothers and sisters who are joining us in this hour of worship online. And my part is to announce the parts and participants for this hour of worship. Our song leader and pianist is Sister Amy Faye Paid. After which, uh, after my part will be the scripture reading and pastoral prayer by Brother Jeff. And then our tithes and offerings, as well as our offertory prayer, will be led to us by Sister Hani Galeato. Then we will be hearing a special music from the Ilardo family. And then next is our speaker, Pastor Amrafal Magpusao, and then our closing song and closing prayer by our speaker. And then before I end, let me read to you a verse about worship, which is found in. 1 Chronicles 16, 23 to 31. Sing to the Lord, all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord all the families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Hey. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. For our scriptures uh, for today, it can be found, and please open your Bible in Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. Hebrew, Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. It reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance and race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cruise, cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us pray. I would like to invite you to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we hallow your name, Father. For you are um, our creator and you've created the Sabbath for us to rest. And Lord, as we partake your bread today, this holy Sabbath day, may you sustain uh, the electric electricity in the Philippines, Father. 
that we would hear and partake your bread for this Holy Sabbath day. We would like to thank you, Father, for sustaining us with instructions, especially this hard times in our lives. Thank you so much for being with our uh, brethren in their tough times uh, with your instructions and with your love through your church members. Thank you so much for answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Sabbath, everyone. Before we will send our tithes and offerings, I will read to you the memory text found in Leviticus 27:30. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord. It is the holy to the Lord. We are called to help people understand the Bible so they can find freedom, healing, and hope in Jesus. When we are faithful with our tithes and offerings, we are helping to take the three angels' messages to the entire world as God commanded. Putting God first by sponsoring missions in crucial. However, we should also invest our time and energy with the people around us, inspiring them to know more about the love of Jesus. We are now ready to send our sites and offerings through our bank account. Father, we worship you this morning with our tithes and offerings. We pray for the courage to put you first in our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Okay, good morning, everyone. Can you hear us? Okay, uh, praise the Lord for that wonderful message and song. Uh, 
uh, I will be introducing our speaker for today. <laughs> our speaker for today is somebody that I've known for 24 years and counting. <laughs> he was born at Matalam, North Cotabato, Philippines, and then he studied and graduated at Mountain View College with a degree in AB Theology. He was then assigned at Leyte Province, Visayas, where he spent most of his time serving the Lord as a district pastor. He is presently serving as a Sabbath school director at East Visayan Conference, and he is happily married to his wife, Fek Agalawan Magpusel. They have two beautiful daughters, Methel Jem Bandalan Magpusa, who is married and is a teacher at one of our Adventist schools in the Philippines. Fem Amethyst Magpusa, who is a grade five student and one handsome son who is currently teaching in Thailand. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, our speaker for today my father, Pastor Amrafel Sarmiento Magpusa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Madungog ba ko? Sabbath. 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 We surely thank the Lord for the blessings of life, health, and safety amidst this uh, threat of pandemic. Still, we are experiencing the protection and the saving grace of our heavenly maker. All the glory and praises be unto our Lord and Savior. I consider this day as a marked day to remember for having this privilege of serving you through this worship service. And also I thank for thank you for the special music. It missed our eyes. God understands. That prepares our thoughts and set our tone of the moment. So do with all the participants in this worship service. I also thank my beloved son for introducing me. I, I now know that he knows me. <laughs> I already have instructed him to continue the preaching if ever there comes a powerful, a power failure here in our local city. So there will be a switch if ever that comes from me to him. But before going through, let us uh, start this uh, talk with a prayer let us pray our heavenly father source of all things living and unliving we come to you ascribing honor and glory to your holy name with humility we seek for forgiveness of our trespasses that we may be covered by your righteousness and make us worthy of the heavenly blessings you are intending to give us this holy sabbath day we thank you for the blessing of this technology you have allowed us to use in this online worship, which you have made it a means and a channel for spreading your gospel through the airwaves, making it available to our rich. May we find ourselves this hour under your divine spell and blessings and your abiding presence be in our midst for we present all these pleadings to our great loving and merciful Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, the title of our study today is about, may I do the screen shares, to share screen, share, uh, screen. screen sharing? Diba na? Kasama niya akong share. Uy, di kasulod, boy. Saan man is yan? Saan? Then? Then? 
Yes. Isa na. Ang yan ni Gabi is ang, ang aniyang apple. Ang wala dito sa file. Ang awa. Oh, sige. Sige na. Ang yan akong po nasa, nasa screen natin. Nasa screen natin. Oh, then? Wala man siya sa... Wala man siya screen sa Zoom. O, oh, o, oh, lagi i-click. O, o. How many mo gawas? Box? O, oh, box. Then? Uh, files? Wait. Ah, desktop. Hindi siya sulod? Ayan. Ayan. Ha? Ayan. Wala kag Macbook. Pinduta <laughs> itong kwan. Macbook mag-share screen niya. Maura mag-iapon ka ng green. Bili makita ni Papa ang file niya nga eh, kwan. Sa Macbook nga kwan. Nga kong file. Naas sa desktop. Nagturi si Uncle. I-click na yung share screen then white ra nga box ang magpakita. Walay tab sa PowerPoint. Ala. Usually na. Ano na ba eh? Ano ka na? Ano? Ipa-open daan. I-swipe niya. Para makita niya yung desktop first. O, oh, pwede. I-minimize niya niya. Kanisip lang ang mga videos. Tayo yun. Si Dito rin pop out. Uy, sayang. Dili, drag. Patisting da. Na akong kuan. Open system. Ah, di na lang ko mag-share screen. I-send na lang sa imong file, Fem. Ikaw mag-share screen. Oh. Is that okay? Ang sama to, pag-send. Wala man siya nakasulod sa imong file. Share screen PowerPoint. Sige daw. Dili siya kakuha. I'm sorry, dili kasulod akong screen. Sige, i-open sa opasyon mo. Ano lagi na oh kan ali ay Kana boy di makita boy Dili pan Dili ko kamao ini da bugoya ay Isen sa iya ang file Sa pag send sa file boy Dili sa email Si mama Email ko no Ayaw na. Diretso na lang ta. <laughs> Sayang. Gigamit mo kanya ang laptop. Sige, ikaw tutubawa dito. Ito ang anak ng file. Aw, oh, dili. Dili mo. Oh. Ayaw. Kinira. Ah. Bukas. Unsa may, unsa may, kuan. Unsa may, paagi ini nga masir screen siya. Apple mong guni. Katlo, na nag-share screen kasi mong desktop pa. Ha? I-share ni mong desktop screen. Lagi. Akong... Uh, oh, desktop. Oh, yeah. Okay, share. Share. Man siya mo highlight na ko. Di na lang boy. Sige lang boy. Istorya na lang ta. <laughs> Pastor, itry daw o open ang imong kuan. Naka-open na ka sa imong PowerPoint? Oo. Oh, oh. Then? Then, 
Uh, i-swipe daw ang imong kuan kaning imong zoom. Kabalo ka mo swipe, di ba? Dili ra ba? Kuan na lang. Share screen. Ay uh, ipindot to imong share screen. Ito okay. Screen. Tapos oh. eh, i-share lang, pindot ang share. Oh, mo adto man system preference. System Open preference. Si system reference. Then, Dahil ang mag-awas yan. Dahil ang mag-awas? Sa iba ba basic na advanced, na files Oo. Oh. Ayun. Ay, basic. basic. Na-nasa basic. Tapos ka nang, wala yung mag-awas na desktop? Na ID stop one. Oh kana, pindutan na. Ang to, ang to. Ang to eh ha. Wala ito. One, one lang. Okay lang one. Pag share na ako, mo tayo mugawas boy, system preference. Ah, uh, kung Microsoft Microsoft ship and select multiple windows. Mag-iapon. Asa kini? Send na lang imong Juan Pastor, PowerPoint kang Fem. Sa Facebook, Messenger. Kani siya, dili mo siya magawas ang advanced Juan siya. Bago na nga Juan Pastor yung gamit nga, Mac. Ha? Sigurado. 20 man atan na. Sige na lang, sige lang. <laughs> Ako na lang yung panon. Sorry kayo, di kasulod akong PowerPoint. But anyway, we can still have it through audio. Ako na lang kung tanggalin. Ayok. Hindi ito madala. Mom na akong notes. Okay. Let's go on. Our study this morning is entitled Run the Race Without Endurance. Our brother had done reading our key texts, but like to read it again in the King James Version. Wherefore, saying we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us and Looking unto Jesus, verse 2, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. There is a slight, the New King James Version, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The King James Version used the words, let us run with patience, while the New King James Version used the words, let us run with endurance. These two words, patience and endurance, in this verse have the same intent. And so allow me to use the word, let us run with endurance, in the New King James Version. The image ray is instructive and imperative, it is in the idea of running a race with some specifics, laying aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Paul in his portray is portraying here an imagery of running a race, doing it with endurance and focus. After his encounter in Damascus Road, he had Focus on a single purpose, 
and that is to fulfill the Lord's agenda in calling him, he suffered from no divided aim. He did not seek for both wealth, fame, and honor here, and for salvation and a crown thereafter. From his singleness of purpose, there came his deep spirituality and success in his service. In 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Christ and Christ alone is the focus of Paul. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Through Christian focus on Christ, not self. This is found in uh, writings of Miss White, Be Like Jesus, 354. Focus on the gospel story. When the faith of the Christians would seem to waver under the fierce opposition, they were forced to meet. The old tried servant of Jesus would repeat with power and eloquence the story of the crucified and risen Savior. This is in the voice Song and Speeches, 364, paragraph 2. In whatever circumstances we are in, let us not lose sight of our Savior. Let us not be disturbed by those who surround us, by their loss or insult, by the obstacle in any form that comes our way. May it be fortune, luxury of life, worldly fame, or the opposite thereof. Difficulties, hardship, adversities, sickness, discouragements, emptiness, loneliness, isolations. Rather, possess a resolute mind, determined to run with endurance the race that is set before us. Allow me to make to take some illustrations from the secular account about people who possess the spirit of endurance and determination that have displayed its real meaning in their lives. One of these is one time in the year 1852, a clerk at the British Trigonometrical Sorby office in India looked up from his mathematical calculation and exclaimed, Sir, I have discovered the highest mountain in the world. Subsequent checks confirmed that he was right. Peak 15, renamed Mount Everest, stood 8,000 848 meters above sea level. Its summit was finally conquered in 1953 by Sir Edmund Hillary and his Sherpa guide, Tenzing Norgay. But they may not have been the first human beings to reach the top. From, for many years after the discovery, no one endeavored to scale, to scale Everest. But in the early 1920s, three British expeditions tried. Only one man named George Lee Malyuri took part in all three attempts. Slightly built, he looked like anything but a rugged alpinist. However, his looks belied his toughness and determination to reach the top of the mountains. The first two expedition failed to, conquest, to conquer Everest. The third attempt was made in 1924. And the climbers pits at that incredible 8,172 meters above sea level. From this camp, two men, A.F. Norton and T. Howard Somerville, set out to reach the top but give up within a bare 300 meters from their goal. On their way down, they passed Malyuri and his companion, Andrew C. Irvin, who expressed their determination and con to conquer the mountain at all costs. Moment later, Norton and Somerville lost sight of them in the swirling mist that enveloped the mountain. But the next morning, the clouds parted briefly and any Odell, the expedition geologist, caught a glimpse of two ant-like figures freezing resolutely toward the top. Within a few dozen meters summit, then the mist closed in and the brave Malyuri and Irvin disappeared forever. Did they reach the top? No one knows. But we don't know that when they were last seen, they were enduring, patiently moving 
moving up, determined to conquer the mountain top. Another renowned person who knows very well the true essence of endurance and had left much blessing to humanity through his <clears throat> inventions. Have given us the idea. This was Thomas Edison, known as the greatest inventor in history, patented more than 10,000 inventions in 60 years. In his attempt to develop a storage battery, he conducted more than 10,000 experiments before he succeeded. Thomas, when Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, he tried over 2,000 experiments before he got it to work. A young, man, a young reporter asked him how it felt to fail so many times. And he said, I never failed once. I invented the light bulb. It's just happened to be a 2,000 step process. Endurance became obvious. George Washington Carver started out his life as a son of a slave parents. When he was a baby, a band of night readers kidnapped him and his mother. It was said his master bought him back in exchange for a racehorse. Carver's determination to pursue life, wrestling with challenges, resulted in the development of more than 300 products from the lowly peanut. The great men and women of history are remembered not because they never failed, but because they didn't let their failures stop them. They keep enduring until they succeed. If these men of renowned reputation have proven the result of endurance, much more in the ranks of God's followers. The Savior Jesus Christ had modeled the life of endurance. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Let's look back. Persons whom we have known, have learned their experiences. John the Baptist, the preacher who prepared the way of Jesus on earth, endured, suffered for the cause of God, and later on, he was beheaded. Stephen, the first martyr of Christianity, have endured the suffering of his life. Peter, the apostle, was crucified invertedly because of his love to God. Many more of our pioneers, believers are ahead of us, have endured hardships in their belief because they have that faith. They endured it. The Walden says, John Wycliffe, Huss and Jerome, Martin Luther and Swingley, Cranmer, Latimer, and Knox, the Eugenots of France, John and Charles Weasley, Weasley, and a host of others that endure the test of faith and have hope to obtain eternity. Back in the days of Noah, he endured preaching the message of salvation for 120 years where no one accepted the gospel save his own family. The suffering of Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 verses 23 to 27, it says, Are the ministers of Christ? I am more in labors more abundant, in strife above measure, in prisons more frequent, in death often. Of the Jews five times receive I forty stripes save one. Thrice I was, was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeying often in perils of waters, in perils of rebels, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the hidden, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painful in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Paul had narrated his sufferings and he endured it all in the name of Christ. I'd like to share to you a story. Maybe it's an old story. 
David and Svea Flood, a Swedish missionaries to Belgian Congo. They were the missionary couple who went to who went with their two-year-old son from Sweden to the heart of Africa, to what was then called the Belgian Congo. They met up with another young Scandinavian couple, the Ericssons, and the four of them sought God for direction. In those days of much tenderness and devotion and sacrifice, they felt lead of the Lord to go out from the main mission station and take the gospel to the remote area. This was a huge step of faith, but the village of Endolera, they were rebuffed by the chief who would not let them enter this town for fear of angering the local gods. The two couples opted to go half a mile up the slope and build their own muds, mud huts. They prayed for spiritual breakthrough, but there was none. The only contact with the village was a young boy who was allowed to sell them chickens and eggs twice a week. Be a flood, a tiny woman of only four feet and eight inches tall, decided that if this was the only African she could talk to, she would try to lead the boy to Jesus. And in fact, he succeeded. She succeeded. But there were no other encouragement. Meanwhile, malaria continued to strike one member of the little band after another. In time, the Ericssons decided that they had had enough suffering and left to return to Central Mission Station. David and Sbia Flood remained there near Indolira to go on alone. Then, of all things, Sbia found herself pregnant in the middle of the primitive wilderness. When the time came for her to give birth, the village chief softened enough to allow a midwife to help her. A girl was born, whom they named Aina. The delivery, however, was exhausting and Sbia flood was already weak for bouts of malaria. The birth process was a heavy blow to her stamina and she lasted only 17 days. Inside David Flood, something snapped in, her, in that moment. He dug a crude grave, buried her 27-year-old 20, wife, and then took his children back down the mountain to the mission station. Giving his newborn daughter to the Ericssons, he snarled, I'm going back to Sweden. I lost my wife and I obviously can take care of this little baby. God has ruined my life. With that, he headed for the port, rejecting not only his calling, but God himself. Within eight months, both the Ericssons were stricken with a mysterious malady and died within days of its other. The baby was turned to another, to, to over, turned over to some American missionaries who adjusted their Swedish name, her Swedish name to Iggy and eventually brought her back to the United States at the age of three. This family loved the little girl and was afraid that if they tried to return to Africa, some legal obstacles might separate her from them. So they decided to stay in their home country and switch from missionary work to pastoral ministry. And that is how Iggy grew up in South Dakota. As a young woman, she attended North Central Bible College in Minneapolis. There, she met and married a young man named Dewey Hertz. Years passed. The Hertz enjoyed a fruitful ministry. Iggy gave birth first to a daughter, then a son. In time, her husband became president of a Christian college in the Seattle area. And Iggy was intrigued to find so much Scandinavian heritage there. One day, a Swedish religious magazine appeared in her mailbox. She had no idea who sent it. And of course, she couldn't read the words. But as she turned the pages, all of a sudden, a photo stopped her call. Her call. There in a primitive setting was a grave with a white cross. And on the cross were the words, Sbia flood. 
Iggy jumped into her car and went straight to the college faculty member who Chino could translate the article. What does he say? She demanded. The instructor summarized the story. No, it was about missionaries who have come to Indolera long ago. The birth of a white baby, the death of a young mother, the one little African boy who had been led to Christ, and how after the whites had all left, the boy had grown up and finally persuaded the chief to let him build a school in the village. The article said that gradually he won all his students to Christ. The children led their parents to Christ. Even the chief had become a Christian. Today, there were 600 Christian believers in that one village, all because of the sacrifice of David and Sbia Flood. For the Hertz 25th wedding anniversary, the college presented them with the gift of a vacation to Sweden. There, Iggy sought to find her real father, an old man now. David Flood had, re had remarried, fathered four more children, and generally dissipated his life with alcohol. He had recently suffered a stroke, still bitter. He had one role in his family, never mentioned the name of God, because God took everything from me. After an emotional reunion with her half-brothers and sisters, Iggy brought up the subject of seeing his father. The others hesitated. You can talk to him, they replied, even though he's very ill now. But you need to know that whenever he hears the name of God, he flies into a rage. Iggy was not to be deterred. She walked into the squalid apartment with liquor bottles everywhere and approached the 73-year-old man lying in a rumpled bed. She came near. Papa, she, tentative, she said tentatively. He turned and began to cry. Aina, he said, I never meant to give you away. Iggy replied, it's all right, Papa. Taking him gently in her arms, in her arms, God took care of me, Aina said. The man instantly stiffened. The tears stopped. God forgot all of us. Our lives had been like this because of him. He turned his back to the wall. Iggy stroked his Father's face and then continued undaunted. Papa, I got a little story to tell you. And it's a true one. You didn't go to Africa in vain. Mama didn't die in vain. The boy you want to the Lord grew up to win that whole village to Jesus Christ. The one seed you planted just kept growing and growing. Today, there are six hundred Africans, African people serving the Lord because you were faithful to the call of God in your life. Papa, Jesus loves you and he has never hated you. The old man turned back to look into his daughter's eyes. His body relaxed. He began to talk. And by the end of the afternoon, he had come back to God. He had resented for many years. Over the next few days, father and daughter enjoyed warm moments together. Iggy and her husband soon have to return to America and within a few weeks, David Flood had gone into rest, asleep in Jesus. A few years later, the Hertz were attending a high-level evangelism conference in London, England where a report was given from the nation of Syri, the former Belgian Congo. The superintendent of the national church representing some 110,000 baptized believers spoke eloquently of the gospels spread in, the, in his nation. Iggy could not help going to ask him afterward if he had ever heard 
of DB and Sbia flood. Yes, madam, the man replied in French. His words were being translated into English. It was Sbia flood who led me to Jesus Christ. I was the boy who brought food to your parents before you were born. In fact, to this day, your mother's grave and her memory are honored by all of us. He embraced her in a long, sobbing hug. Then he continued, You must come to Africa to see because your mother is the most famous person in our history. In the time, that is exactly what Iggy Hertz and her husband did. They were welcomed by cheering throng of villagers. Seven met the man who had been hired by her father many years before to carry her back down the mountains in a hammock cradle. The most dramatic moment, of course, was when the pastor escorted Iggy to see her mother's white cross for herself. She knelt down in the soil to pray and give thanks. Later that day in the church, the pastor read from John 12, verse 24. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. He then followed with Psalm 126, verse 5. Those who sow in tears will reap with, with songs of joy. From the biblical narrative, we have more enough life stories of great heroes of faith who endured, who have endurance and determination, and they have stayed in the promise and live a life full of hope in God. Before Christ's coming, we may find ourselves running the race with endurance, resolutely looking for Jesus, looking to Jesus our Lord. The hope of seeing the face of our God is worth all effort and sacrifices that the attainment of this hope demands that is found in Acts of the Apostles, page 484. The curtain of time will run down upon its day, its months, and its year. And the end of days will, and at the end of days, God will bring us back to the land of the beginning. And when at last we all stand at the shore of the ceaseless eternity, receiving that eternal reward through the infinite grace of God, it is because we run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Me, God. Christly bless us all. Thank you. Amen. 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 For our closing song, let's sing Work for the Night is Coming.
let us pray. Our great God, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of worship. For the moment where you have spent time with us, we thank you, dear Father, for reminding us of your will, of your expectation to us that we should run the race and we will always look at you as our Savior. Will thou bless the members of this uh, Zoom worship. Be with them in their respective families and their respective abodes. Grant them, their Father, the ways of their hearts, the fulfillment of their days, and the satisfaction in their endeavors that they may obtain your goodness in their daily lives. As we depart from this worship, may your continued blessings will be experienced in our lives. The guidance of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Father, and the continued presence of Jesus Christ in our hearts will always be our experience as we go on looking for that day where you will usher us into that ceaseless eternity. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Me, our pleadings will be heard and the answers will be obtained by each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very much. Sabat. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.